We're now joined by Monique Sheba, who's with HIPAM, the Hawaii Pandemic Applied Modeling Work Group. Dr. Sheba, thank you so much for your time tonight. Can we first start off with you briefly explaining what exactly your group is and how you've come up with these pandemic forecasts? Yes, of course. So HIPAM was uh, created by Dr. Fan at the beginning of the pandemic to um, get together as scientists like with different background, epidemiology, mathematics uh, to uh, to study the problem. And so we've been with my team. We are I'm a mathematician at the University of Hawaii and we are modeling uh, the forecast or the spread of the virus. And we've been working on models for a year and a half now and uh, we've developed something very tailored to the islands. Doctor, the uh, forecast that came out this week originally had the state having 900 COVID hospitalizations by the end of this month, which would be quite alarming. I checked today, it looks like the forecast is now around 600 instead. Why have the numbers come down? Yes, so what is really important to understand is that it's it's very important to look at counties separately and not aggregate everybody under the same number. So we're looking, we we have a model for every different county that they are different and, and now we're in different situations. So Honolulu, the hospitalization are under what we projected. And one of the reasons is that we don't know who is getting infected right now. We don't know the age of the people, the vaccination status. We don't know if they have comor comorbidity so we have to aggregate the probability to get to the hospital the same for every infected individual, which is not the case. So we were using numbers from other places that were ahead of us in order to do the estimate into our model. And now we're starting to have better numbers that are more looking as what is actually happening into our island. So Honolulu, the hospitalization is under what we projected as the middle fit. So it's more... Uh, it's a little closer to the best scenario, but it's still like we might still be looking at 500 to 600 uh, hospitalization. Again, it's unclear because hospitalization depend a lot on who is infected. Then Hawaii is actually Hawaii County. Uh, the hospitalization count of today is higher than what we projected, so it has to be watched. Uh, for Maui, uh, we uh, it is a little under what we had, but the numbers have been very high for that county lately and uh, for Kauai the numbers are a little above what we predicted. I know you kind of told me on the phone earlier today there is some room for error. How accurate have you been though in the past? <laughs> That's a very good question <laughs> and it is very hard to validate that like uh, the Delta actually people, uh, we've heard people saying that the model was wrong, but the model did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was predicted what would happen if no action were taken and the model was defeated, which is the purpose of epidemiological modeling. You want uh, the like project the numbers ahead of time and then try to see what action and what is what are the room for maneuvers. So here, uh, it, because we are in the same status in terms of mitigation and restriction, then the model is fairly accurate to what is happening. And I know you are all uh, part of a volunteer group. So what purpose do you serve in policy making? Oh, we have zero purpose. We are uh, just scientists that are looking. I'm just a mathematician looking at the models and not uh, not not involved in any policy making. As you mentioned, still possibly 500 hospitalizations by the end of this month, which would be more than we had during the peak of the Delta surge. What can people do to keep that from happening? What's, what's the variable there? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think the, the most important that you can do is being aware and look at the numbers. And uh, what is uh, a little alarming right now and actually quite alarming is the positivity rate, which is the rate of uh, tests that come po back positive. So right now, like for Honolulu, we are every fourth test, one is positive. That's a very, very high number. And it has been growing. The seven day average of positivity is growing, which shows that we are still in the very high risk period. And it does not suggest that we're going to be plateauing or curbing right now. It suggests that at the opposite, we're still going up and the hospitalization are lagging behind uh, the daily cases. So that that's something that we're going to watch. Then for people, what they can do. So again, you have to be really aware of the situation that it's still a high risk period. You have to continue everything that we have said. Uh, it has been uh, um, 
uh, identify that booster really helps. So if you haven't had your booster, if you're not vaccinated, we strongly encourage you to take those steps, try to avoid large gathering and, and protect uh, everybody around you. And when do you, you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, when do you expect to see these cases start to go back down, maybe Omicron start to recede? And how do you get that data? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So the model is, uh, again, we've been running that model uh, for a year and a half, and it's running uh, since and looking at everything that happened. So it knows about what the person of this population is still susceptible, and it looks at when uh, when the positivity might go down, when the Omicron might not have enough room anymore to keep transmitting at the level that it is transmitting now. So we are looking, the model are looking at like uh, in January, in like maybe two, three weeks. But again, this is very speculative because for instance, we don't have data about the rate of reinfection, people that had the Delta and that recovered and, not, and that are now getting infected with the Omicron. So that could add some uh, some more people into the susceptibility group and push it a little further. Now, if, if we start flattening the curve, uh, I know there have been some decision and some restriction on gathering. Uh, then if that flattened the curve, we might not go as high, but then the peak will occur a little later. So it all depends a little bit uh, on those factors. Monique, uh, looking at these numbers, you know, so many hospitalizations, nobody likes to hear bad news. Have, has your group been accused of being like alarmists, you know, almost fear mongering in, in some ways? Uh, we, we, just, uh, we just look at what the models say and, and there are a lot of uh, hospitalization, but compared to Delta, we're doing much better. So there is a, really a silver lining in the situation. I think what is more concerning right now is the fact that a lot of people are getting sick. The positivity is very high. There is a lot of transmission going on. And therefore, even if people do not end up in the hospital, they might not be able to show up at work. And we see that in the news. And that's the reality. I don't think that in that sense, we are alarming anything because it is what is happening. Well, Dr. Monique Sheba from HiPam, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.